This episode of Double Tap is brought to you by Night Vision, Mitchell Defense, Medical Gear Outfitters, Matador Arms, Blue Alpha, and Bowers Group. Welcome to Double Tap, episode 350. Your host tonight are Jeremy Paz Derek from River's Edge Tactical in Valley City, Ohio. We got Nick Lynch checking in from Montana, Bus Built Systems. John Patton from the Gun Collective is in the house. My name is Sean Heron. Let's have some fun tonight. We killed Aaron. I'm sorry. Uh, it he, was, he did. It was past time. Uh, he posted on his face. Well, Jeremy posted on his Facebook that he's on vacation. And uh, he gone. No more. Goodbye. So sad. Anyway. I say you he did. <laughs> Jeremy. How did you hack his Facebook? That was weird. Who? What? I said you posted on Aaron's Facebook that he was just going on vacation, but you actually killed him. Oh, wow. Hey, if you could actually pay attention and make, make my jokes, jokes hit just a little better. Try giving a single fuck <laughs> instead of zero. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, good start. Great, great <laughs> effort, everybody. Doing good. Yay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Nick's here. <laughs> hey nick's here jeremy did you like have a bad day i'm now nah, i got a customer it's pissing me the fuck off oh is he and i'm i'm trying you i'm trying talk to about read your mom like that i'm trying to read something no my mom would be way more understanding than this fucking cunt you want me to call him <laughs> what's that you want me to call him oh uh, no <laughs> fucking jeremy calls me the other day can you call him on the show yeah actually just throw it on speaker be mad as hell hey um why the fuck you being a bitch <laughs> <laughs> all right we'll let jeremy take care of his customers <laughs> whatever that means yeah and uh we'll get it john welcome welcome to the show hi hi you know when while. we when we told you that aaron was uh going to die uh you immediately said yes i would absolutely like to replace him monday night yeah i mean that's that's the order of things right like uh, all is in the natural world uh, <laughs> when Aaron, uh, you know, withers away like a uh, fucking Spider-Man in the Marvel movie. <laughs> right. He was uh, throwing too much web and he, <laughs> uh, got dehydrated. And died. He's like the crypt keeper now. <laughs> <laughs> he already was <laughs> just shooting dust out of his shooter, if you know what I mean. Oh, oh, just... <laughs> That's gross. Oh, man. Well, let's, uh, I'm going to do an ad read and then we'll get into the show. First up, we got Night Vision. Nick, what does Night Vision make? They make fission at night. Well, ah. right. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, they, make, they make night sights. Can you imagine if it was actually fission, how f dead we would all be? That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> it would uh, it would actually be pretty cool john do you have any night vision sites i don't yet i want to man i know uh, out of here. what gun would you put them on i probably put them on my edc i've got a vp9 Ooh, let me i'm just gonna go to their their website real quick and could see. be uh, i'm sure they've got something for my wilson combat i'm sure they've got something for what else the echelon what else would i consider carrying what the fuck? The VP9. Let's see. A, that's an HK. Here we are. Yeah. I know you exclusively shoot high points. <laughs> I mean, mostly. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we go to optics ready stealth. I can even throw this up on the screen here. Look at that. And let's see. I, don't, I actually don't know if they have the, the VP9, but let's see what they got. Oh, zoom. Only for the VP9 for this model. These are the. Optics ready stealth. These are my favorite. If you Dude. plan to shoot suppressed or, you know, uh, any of that stuff, red dot, these are great. I love having the front sight with the little ring around it. For yeah. Daytime. Like it makes picking it up in the daytime just that much faster. I like orange. Uh, I think. Yeah. I prefer like orange it. as well, but that's having anything there to highlight that front sight is just nice. Yeah. I totally agree. So go check them out. Uh, night I like vision. orange. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Nick. <laughs> N-I-G-H-T-F-I-S-I-O-N. Coupon code WLS is life. 
uh, saves you your hard earned money. And I was sorry. not ready for that. I was not ready. <laughs> I like turtles. <laughs> Oh, uh, goodness. All right. So, John, before we get, do anything else, uh, you have an announcement. I do. You are coming yeah. out of the event closet. I, oh, okay. We're just, we're going to roll with that. Okay. <laughs> uh, what what yeah. do you got to announce? So, this, when is this coming out? This is coming out. Uh, recorded live Monday night, uh, coming out tomorrow morning at probably like eight Eastern. I don't know. Krista's like, up super early so whatever okay. in human so time I'll just, on march 26th this is probably the day you're listening to this at 6 p.m eastern tickets for guns uh gun con go on sale at guncon.net that's that's what really like i asked sean i was like hey can i just go tell everybody in the we like shooting audience that the tickets are going on sale he said yeah yeah, yeah. i'm pumped I mean, man it's been a while since you've been on, so you needed to be on anyway. But it's perfect that they, they go on sale tomorrow. Yeah, they go on sale tomorrow, uh, a.k.a. today, depending on when you're listening. And uh, we've got even more tickets than last year. There are more brands involved. I think we're going to have probably about 50 companies jammed into the warehouse at <laughs> Brownells. I mean, it's going to be nuts. Over 160 people on the content creator list this year, which is like... 50 to 60 more than last year holy uh, moly that's so yeah many. like like we are stacking it deep it is going to be nut to butt there's going to be new product launches all kinds of good stuff the q a panels the educational seminars we're doing food trucks for lunch again and what else uh oh yeah we're giving away like 30 40 grand worth of stuff yeah, it, uh, at like the end of the, the day, is that what, what you normally yeah, do? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when the, the ticket includes this, so the ticket includes your lunch, an exclusive GunCon 24 t-shirt. Uh, you get a badge that's like a souvenir if you care about that. And then, of course, you get access to all the giveaways. And the way we handle that is you get given a certain amount of tickets. I think we do five at the door. And then every vendor has like a little uh, bucket or whatever like an ammo can or something and you yeah. get to pick where you put your tickets so you can kind of control what you have a chance at winning um tickets this year are 50 bucks and that kind of includes all of that stuff yeah it's it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty rad man i'm excited about it the and i'm gonna give you guys a pro tip like stick around till the end of the day like go in hang out look at all the booths do whatever seminars there are watch the panels and then just like hang out and visit uh, and do stuff till the end of the day and then just walk around and put your tickets in the, in the buckets that don't have a lot of entries in them. That's like not people, a bad pro tip. Oh dude. People were like winning mad stuff. It was awesome. There was one guy. I don't know when he put his tickets in, but his number got called for like six things. So we only let people win one thing, especially with the amount of people that we're going to have this year. Um, we're doing, I like last year I had to go, I, I decided to go around to all the booths, and like call stuff out, but people couldn't hear me. So I was like shouting and I, there was like a crowd of 200 people following me. It just didn't work out great. So this year I'm going to do it from the stage. Like, Fair. you know, that's, it's just going to have to work that way. But, uh, that, that's yeah. a better idea. I think. Yeah, it really, it's just gotta be that way. <laughs> like it's not possible to do it, it the other way. It was just this throng of people following John around from booth to booth. <laughs> it was, it was great. And it was always like I would call a number and, you know, you wait, uh, give people a chance to read their ticket. And we would hear a noise from like the other side of the room and somebody would be like, hey, I, it was my number. I one one time I had two people show up in front of me and I'm like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Aaron's uh, going to be like Aaron's going to be there, like changing disguises at every booth. <laughs> if he wins something the next time he'll just like <laughs> turn his hat backwards and like shave his beard real quick so he's gonna slowly progress to have a hitler mustache yeah 100 percent, and probably win like nine things that's how he does well you hey, know can you can you make sure i win something this time john absolutely not e even if it's just your, your love and affection you will never get that wow no 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 you will never get this <laughs> Uh, fucking great but yeah no, it's about I, I think it'll be good time i want the we like shooting folks that are out there listening or watching or whatever 
if you guys, um, you know, show up and have a good time, that's what I care about. Like this whole event, the whole thing is about building a stronger community. And the, the WLS audience is already strong, right? You already have this like sort of fellowship. And I would love for that to become larger in the gun community. Like no bullshit. I would love that. Yeah. It's awesome. Jeremy, uh, you've got this on your calendar, right? What? June 29th. Put it on your calendar. I don't have a fucking calendar. I know what I'm doing of the week. I don't know what I'm doing that date of the morning of. It's in your wallet next to your checkbook. And (laughs) like a big full size calendar. This year. I may just put my bum on John's van again. Ooh. My bum is on your van. My bum is on your van. We should make mm-hmm. that an event That's at right. GunCon, actually. The van will, mm-hmm. uh, you know, fingers crossed, be done by then, which would be pretty rad. I don't know that I'll let people in it uh, because I don't want all the, you know, all that grossness in my van and then have to clean it. But uh, it might be open. You say Are you talking about the jizz? <laughs> yeah. 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 Hawkeye Handloader says I moved to Iowa to be closer to GunCon true statement i don't believe that one bit but thank you for pretending (laughs) he he could pick between several different places uh mars the bottom of the ocean and iowa and he picked iowa because (laughs) (laughs) he's like yeah move to mars uh the watcher says let me in that van and i'm planting cocaine i mean that's cool just tell us where you plant it (laughs) like Like, i mean wait do we have to pay you first? Like, I, I just want to make sure I understand. Yeah, the brand. How, does, how does this work? <laughs> or do you, do we get it? Do we find it and then pay you later? Like, I don't understand. Let us know. Uh, DM us. Um, just email uh, VSO gun channel on Instagram. <laughs> Curtis is like, why is everybody telling me about cocaine? <laughs> All right. Guncon.net tickets go on sale the day that this podcast comes out. To, uh, I'll, we'll be posting on social media and stuff too, but that is, March 26th at 6 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, GunCon is June 29th. That's correct. Yeah, June 29th, 9 a.m. till the end of the day. Uh, we will be there. Uh, as far as I know, like all the all the WLS guys except Savage. So all the men of WLS will be there. Uh, dude, and we've got... It'll be a blast. We have so many effing creators coming this year. Like the panels are stacked uh we've got a bunch of cool people that may not be on a panel but are still rad and still showing up of like creators of all types and sizes it's yeah. gonna be so much effing fun it'll be the closest and also jeremy and i ah <laughs> it'll be the closest Honestly, sorry you'll ever come to touching mr guns and gears pectorals i mean like i would just i would i have two i would suggest that they don't try that because he is a little bit scary but uh is like, he? don't even do it as a joke. Because <laughs> he won't get the joke. You go up to him and start trying to fondle him. You're like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> Suddenly, you've got a broken jaw. Yeah, I've, ne- I've never found him scary. That's just well, sexual assault. Listen here, you fucking ogre. <laughs> right. Jeremy's like, I don't find anyone under 6'8 scary. I mean, I'm trying to think of anyone. The uh the blue alpha dude, Steven, he's bigger than you. Is he? Yeah. Did he like did you feel him to know no. he's bigger? Oh Jesus, I meant taller. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, can you just tell from the, the mouth yeah. feel? Well, to answer your question, yeah. <laughs> My mouth was so dilated. I hate this conversation. Guncon.net. <laughs> uh, go buy your tickets. AR Drew says, will there be a WLS get together at GunCon? Yes. Yeah, it's called the whole fucking event. Yeah. <laughs> yep. The whole thing, dude. Yeah, we'll be there. We'll be there and we'll hang out. It'll be dope. So normally at events, what I do is like anyone who's a listener and comes up or whatever, I'm just like, yeah, we're going to like do our normal thing, but you should come hang out with us and just oh, like sure. walk, walk around with us. So we always end up with a big crew, big crew just walking around having fun. Dude, I am so down for people, you know, kind of hanging out and just having a good time with each other. Yeah. It's be great. Yeah, it's it'll be awesome. So uh, we'll be sharing on social media, like, uh, you know, as, as it gets a little bit closer, uh, the different things and seminars and panels and stuff like that. Uh, AR Drew, no, you still must obey the restraining order. It's not me. It's the law. Sorry. 
I don't know what to tell you. So that judge was a jerk. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, anyway, guncon.net. You know what would be hilarious? Tell me more. Is if, is if John was at that event, you know, like he's hosting it. Uh-huh. He said he loves seeing people like have a good time and stuff. But what if he didn't? I think that'd be way more entertaining. At least for me, it would be more entertaining if John was hosting a big event, but then he was just like wringing his hands because people were having a good time. <laughs> he's like, like oh, oh what you're doing? they all came to my my big fucking badass thing and they're all having fun and it just irks me. Oh. <laughs> Uh, I actually dated, great. He's like the Grinch. I dated a, a chick like that. Actually, she hated everything and hated everyone in the gun industry. It was it was awesome. I mean, like to be fair, I am a miserable bastard, but uh, not in not surrounding gun con. Yeah, it's the one time a year that he's happy. <laughs> <laughs> not wrong. Not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> he's also a little bit stressed because there's a lot going on. Uh, yeah. John, you shot, you shot my Mitchell Defense rifle, right? Sure did. Shoot smooth, right? As smooth as butter, dude. Like yeah. legit, really, really smooth. I've had a bunch of people shoot. You know, I think I'll probably bring it to GunCon this year, and we'll shoot it in the parking lot. I was like, where are we going to shoot that, Sean? <laughs> where are we going to do that? No, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it as my self defense EDC. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're gonna get a Kydex holster for it. Uh, yeah, uh, like a sling, a uh, uh, scabbard on my back. A scabbard? Does that Isn't, come with a kilt? Uh, no, no, I'm not a fucking weirdo. If you oh, put yeah, a that's bayonet the, on yeah. it, if you put a bayonet on it, it could be a stabbard. That would be dope. Oh my but god, not, I'll be right not, back. Not on the gun, <laughs> not on the gun, just on the actual scabbard. Yeah, on the on the scabbard yeah. itself. So it's like weapon inception. Um. But yeah, I think I I think I will bring it. Uh, in one of the cult groups, some people were asking about bolt carrier groups and which ones were good and worth the money. And it really was awesome to like see a bunch of other cult members literally going in and being like, I, I bought the Mitchell Defense when when it was first introduced, the bolt carrier group, and it's it's outstanding. Everything Sean, Sean said is true. Uh, they are absolutely sick. And one of the cooler things is that a couple of the dudes that were, that were doing it are a couple of maybe the pessimists in our, in our, in our group. And both of them were just like, yeah, it's the real deal. It's badass. So if you're looking for a bolt carrier group, uh, Mitchell defense has them. If you're looking for a full rifle, AR pistol, uh, any of that stuff, they have them as well. They're great. They're high quality. John, they're near you, right? Yeah, he's he's like less than an hour away, I think. Yeah. So PA PA dude. Well, I think he was like in Texas, and now he's now he's in PA. Mitchell Defense is in PA. Yeah, he's a good dude. I like Nathan a lot, and uh, he makes some really nice stuff. Yeah, agreed. MitchellDefense.com coupon code WLS10. Whether you're buying a bolt carrier group or a rifle, it works for all of them. Go check it out. And this is the time on the show when we finally get into Dear WLS. And this is where you send your questions. Go to welikeshooting.com slash dashboard. Click on Dear WLS, submit your question, and possibly win a prize. Nick, why don't you take the first question? Okay, I think this one is specifically for you, Sean, because uh, he talks about being old. Okay. But ah. this is from Crypto Redneck. It says, Happy Monday, boys. I have a med, quick que- med kit question for you. As I get older, I'm getting hurt more often. I have med kits in the house and in my truck, but I need to build one specific to my garage. Garage injuries tend to be cuts and burns, both fire and chemical, etc. I have a one foot by foot land and a half cabinet. Oh, foot and a half cabinet. <laughs> uh, I read that uh, that T as an L for some. Anyway, um, I have a one foot by foot and a half cabinet. What would you put in it? I, I got this. I got this. Super glue and lie. Yeah. I don't know what the lie is for, but I like it. You know, if you get, you know, just got to burn your skin off all the way. Like if it started to burn chemically, just get it the rest of the way. <laughs> These, This is actually what Aaron is made of. Super glue and lies. 
<laughs> no, uh, super glue is actually super handy for cuts. It is. It is. You know, the, I mean, obviously, if you're talking about cuts, you're going to want some some gauze pads. Obviously, the, the life-saving stuff like tourniquets, gauze, pressure bandages, uh, hemostatic gauze, all that stuff. And then just you know, random stuff that medical, you would find in mom's kit. Medical Gear Outfitters actually has a whole burn treatment section. Oh, do they, they really? Do. I even linked to it in the show notes. Oh, that was my link. No. You're, first you're stealing my jokes. Now you're stealing my my links. Oh, I put Wait, the link no. there. No, I did. No, I put that link there. I, I just went to history and I see that I added it at four four oh six. I love. Got him. I love that uh, you had to go check to make sure that you <laughs> you were the one who did it. Well, I don't remember what happened. Bitch. Yeah, I don't remember what happened two hours ago. You the, are getting up there in age. The thing about burns is that you need to keep in mind that keeping them sterile is very, very, very important. Um, he has burn gel, first aid cream, water gel, four by four burn dressing, um, Vaseline dressing, which are actually really, really super useful. He's got a burn sheet. If you need to cover up like uh, large portions of the body or the entire, entire body, uh, zinc ointment for minor burns, first aid burn cream for minor burns, uh, just, all the stuff there. And then I would also recommend the mom kit is just a great one to have uh, in the garage because it, it does a bunch of different stuff. There's tampons in there, but that's, that's just for pleasure. Um, yeah. Medical gear outfitters.com use coupon code. We like shooting. And, and again, entire area of, of burn stuff. And then just all their, all their kits, all their different kits, find the one that, that would work for you. I'd also recommend putting a little sticker with the phone numbers that you need. Because uh, in some situations, you may not be the one calling and True. whoever, you know, people get panicked and all that, like just having something to land back on since since it's going to be in the garage. I mean, yeah, just a little bit of info goes a long way. One hundred percent. And if you're really, really into it, you could get a sick burn kit that just has whiskey. So you can drown your sorrows when someone makes fun of you. That's what I do. <laughs> your dad jokes are so good. Thanks. <laughs> BJ Brick says, has Jeremy met the Canic rep? Yes. We know Adam very well. Uh, he's scary big. John probably knows the guy. Who does yeah, he? Adam, Adam is a giant. But he's a gentle giant. Who? Yeah. Adam from uh, Century slash Canic. Uh, do I know him? Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. you guys always talk about how tall you are. Do we? Yeah. You, 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 you're like, Hey, you're, you're a tall drink of water. And he's like, Hey, you're really tall as well. And you guys like doc and it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jeremy, why don't you take the next question? <sighs> <laughs> Just so exasperated from that customer. <laughs> Dude, you have no idea. You're right. I don't. You want to hear a story? No, mm -hmm. I want you to read the next thing. Ooh. I'd like to hear a story. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. So a guy brings us a gun to thread a barrel on. Oh, oh this same dude? Yeah, that dude. Well, you guys fucked him over, so I understand. I didn't fuck him over. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll uh, up and just let you tell your story. So a guy brings a gun into a have a barrel threaded, and um, uh, somewhere along the line, the fucking uh, part jumps in the lathe. Like, shit happens and uh so the threads get fucked up and uh if it was just uh cosmetic but it worked then um if it was like when it came off and it looked like shit i was like ah fuck that looks like shit but if it had worked but just been cosmetic i'd have been like yeah no charge sorry about that but it does work we tested it yada 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 you know it's concentric it's just just doesn't look good um but when he tried to thread now we checked two of our cans and and a muzzle device and they both worked so when we put his can on there it wouldn't they said his can wouldn't thread down onto the muzzle device which is fucking weird why would three half 28s go on there and then his wouldn't right right so his had to be tighter or some 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 problem with it regardless whatever i'm like all right like i'll do whatever i can to make it right like i'm like one of i could do one of three things i can either take that take those threads face it off it'll be like they were never there we'll we'll blue the end of the barrel and uh, you'll lose about three quarters of an inch overall length but really it's not going to affect much uh number two is i'll try to source a barrel 
and number three is I'll I'll see if I can find like a barrel to action and just swap them. And he's like, all right. So he finds a gun at a at a shop that's about 25 minutes away from my house. They just do online stuff and they had one. So okay. he actually he actually went and looked at it and he said, Hey, this place has one. I put hands on it, you know, that one. So I call him up. It's stupid expensive. And I'm like, shit, like I'm not, I don't want to drop 20. $2,400. Jesus. Um, right. Like I get it. We fucked up, but still. Yeah. $2,400 bad. Yeah. And um, so I talked to the guy and I'm like, dude, you know, this is the situation. Gun store to gun store. Like, can you help me out? He's like, yeah, we'll see what we can do. He goes, well, if we take the scope out of it, then it's only 1600. Cause this guy doesn't, it will just give him the scope back. He's okay with that. I was like, man, I'm better than 24. So I'm like, cool. So I run up there, cut the guy a check. And so I buy a whole new gun to replace this guy's with. Okay. That's and, already above and beyond. Right. I would think so. So I buy a whole new gun, $1,600 to, to swap barreled actions. Then I figure we'll just do what I was originally going to do with the barrel, face it back off, resell it, let people know the barrel's an inch too short because, uh, you know, it had a bad crown on it or a bad, you know, uh, muzzle damage, if you will, and uh, uh, go on his way. Well, he stopped down after I wasn't. He keeps showing up when I'm not there. Smart. And, right. And because uh, nobody else will make the call. And uh, so he's like, my manager texts me. He's like, yeah, pro, you know, there was a problem. The, the the gun that we have has a barrel band and his gun had the barrel band removed. So the the new barreled action wouldn't go into his old stock. And he's like so bent out of shape over this fucking stock. And I'm like, dude, the stock that we got, to, he's like, it's got a thumb hole and da, 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 da. I'm like, dude, this is like a straight up target setup with a tail hook like you wanted and everything. Like, just take the new gun and leave me that whole thing. He won't do it. And uh, now he wants us to pay for uh, somebody else to fit the new action into his stock nope, and remove nope. the barrel band. Nope, not doing mm, it. No, nope. yeah, and, uh, insane. Yeah. And, uh, and then he said there was damage done to the stock while we had it. And I'm like, no, there fucking wasn't. And I'm like, it sat in a rack. Like, it sat in a rack up on the wall the whole time it was here, except when it what was. What kind being... of stock is on the. the it's a it's a Winchester Model 52. It's an older target rifle. Is this impossible to find barrels for? Mm. Head spacing is going to be a bitch if we had to mm -hmm. replace the barrel. Um, I've seen it done, but it's, 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 it's rough. It's, it's not, it's an older way of doing shit anyways. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so he took, so, but this is a gun that he found and he said this one, and right? He, right. Like, and I went and got it as far as I'm, as far as I'm concerned at this point, like our, like, if he's like, here's the bill, I'm going to be like, get fucked, bro. I'm not, I, I, I bought you a new, I bought you a brand new fucking gun. I'm not. You know, I, I don't know what other people would do in this situation. Just say, sorry, and then fucking send you down the road and just take the bad press. But, uh, like, I, this guy's getting on my fucking nerves. I mean, a $1,600 purchase for the thing he suggested right. was the right thing. Like, that is above and beyond, dude. Right. Yeah, and above you went and got it. You, it's not like, yeah. it's not like you made him go get it or, like... Somebody like the barrel band thing is annoying. Somebody in that equation could have picked up on it. So everybody missed it because he looked at it. You looked at it. Everybody missed it. It's like, sorry, dude, we, we tried to make it right. This is our attempt at making it right. You said you wanted this one. We got that one. Deal yeah. with it. Right. So uh, that's kind of where I'm at. And I'm just fucking angry about the whole thing. And uh, yeah. as you should be, you went above and beyond. Like you did so much more than I would have done. Right. <laughs> and I, I told the guy, I was like, look, like the, and then he's like pissed at the machinist. And I'm like, it jumped out of the jaw. Like it, like I, he said it like rolled under the tooling or something. And he's fucking talking like a machinist. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know what that means, but like it got fucked up. And he's like, yeah, I got fucked up. And, um, uh, I'm like, bro, if we just and take yeah. take that off, and he's like getting bent out of shape over the fucking crown. I'm like, dude, there's no crown. It's a flat barrel. There, there's no fucking crown. Like, <laughs> he's like, as if a crown can be put in, like, right? And like, he's just, he's just being like, and, and at this point, I'm like, all right, now you're just being punitive, and I'm, yeah. 
I'm done. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm done. Usually in, in a situation like that, I would just be like, dude, what, how, how do you want me to handle this? Because I think, I think we need to be on the same page and we're clearly not. Right. That's frustrating, man. Yeah. Super yeah. frustrating. So like, I'm trying I something. I had something sort of like this happen, and that's how I wound up with a 14 and a half inch 300 win mag Tika. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sounds like a flamethrower. That sounds so uncomfortable. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, like, I figured that you would like do whatever you, whatever you had to to make it right, but god damn, like, you have yeah. exceeded what I thought you would do. So, that's, that's what I'm dealing with right now, and I'm just fucking pissed off. Yeah. Understand you should tell that guy to go eat a cock dog. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you have that just on the ready? Because <laughs> uh, I was drawing it while he was telling his story. That's a shot. Like, this guy's definitely a cock dog. I've got the drawn meme for him. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Nick was like, hey, what's for dinner tomorrow? Let me make a shopping list. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you, know it's, you know, it's fucked up. Your face? I have no idea where my whiteboard went. God damn it. I knew this was gonna happen. I, Dude, my, I leave it on my desk. My kids fucking must have grabbed it or some shit. <laughs> They're like, "Oh, look, I could draw." Uh, like it's gone. I don't know where it's at. Cool, 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 cool. I'll have to ask <laughs> my whiteboard for. Uh, what is that? A new? That's a new thing. Oh yeah, for gunfights. Oh, I found oh, it. Oh, oh, oh. One of our, uh, Plow guy Dave bought us all whiteboards and markers. I found it. I found it. It was hiding. Okay. Thank God. Hey, Jeremy, why don't you read that next question? Uh, but I just told a story. <laughs> Brett E says first suppressors in jail, but while I'm waiting, have been looking into a couple hosts and it was and would like the thoughts of the crew. Gonna keep both cans direct there. I'd have a dead air nomad LTI 30 kale, which will primarily be used for hunting with a little longer range target, as this one has some temperature limits. The other is the dead air primal 460 full auto rated, no barrel lengths or temperature restrictions of primal will be the dual until i can go after a couple more cans that said i love a few hosts i'm looking for a shorty potentially home defense apparently super quiet short range boomsticks will you share thoughts on the following cmmg descent 300 blackout ptr 9c versus ptr 9k spear lt 300 black mat 9 wide array of price but willing to wait a little bit longer to save for the price here i know the mat 9 has a f28 threaded looking to stay with the 5 8 24 to cover more of my current any way to re-thread, re-barrel the Mat 9? Super important question. Also, Crunchy Cheetos or Puffs for each of you. First off, you can buy an end adapter for your can for like 60 bucks. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. So that that's easy. You just, well, depending on the can, right? Yeah. It's a Nomad. It's a... Where's my Nomad? Uh, a Nomad's not going to fit the Mat 9. Hold it's on. 30 cal. Correct. Oh no, the primal. The primal is definitely takes the oh, primal. You can definitely because that thing takes boosters and shit as well. Yeah. I think. Yeah, so that's what you would want to do is right. like just go buy a half twenty eight insert. I swear. I have <laughs> Crypto redneck Sean just flashing the inside arm as much as possible. No, like my fucking back is fucked up. It was feeling better until I played hockey last night, but now it's all fucked up again. Is that what you call it? Yep. Hockey console hockey with dudes. Uh, I have a 300 uh, blackout descent. Um, I shot one. I have. I have actually never shot mine, but uh, <laughs> I have shot one. It's pretty good. Um, uh, versus the spear, I think it's cheaper. I don't know what the L spear LT costs, but like I know they're stupid money. I'm I'm curious why we're not looking at, um, like. An AR-15 in 300 blackout. I don't. I don't know. He just sounds like he wants different shit. Uh, so like PTR 9C versus PTR 9K. I have the 9C. Uh, it's fucking outstanding. I mean, if you want a shorty, the 9K is cool. I wanted something that was a little bit bigger. It was something I was gonna like make into a night vision shooting gun, and that's what I did. That gun is fun. Oh, dude, it's so much fun. And the 9C is great. It's like better than the SP5 feature wise, in my opinion, because the SP5 is very much like the older kind of, you know, non modernized MP5 and if that or SP5. And if that's what you want, if you're going for like uh, die hard, whatever, like 
totally understand and that you're going to want to go for something like that or maybe even the Century Arms because so similar. But the PTR9C is like updated, so it has a rail on the top, so you don't have to do the stupid claw mount for an optic or anything like that. It's got an M-Lock handguard on it. It's uh, ready for a, a Picatinny brace or, or whatever and just kind of out of the box. So it's like modernized out of the box, and that was exactly what I was looking for. So if that's what you're looking for, that's a great option. And whether it's short or longer, that's really just up to you and how you want to use it. I have not fucked with the Sig Spear LT at all. Um, I don't think I've shot a descent, especially in 300 black. When you shot yours, John, or shot the one that you shot, what'd you think of it? I thought it was okay. I mean, you know, it's a 300 blackout. They're not like, wow, that's amazing. Um, and it was like 15 degrees out and super windy. And I had Hop from TFB TV filming me. So, like, I don't really remember the experience all that well. I know it didn't suck. You know what I mean? Like it did. It didn't suck, but it was super effing cold. I think uh, the spear is a nice gun. I have shot that in, in five five six. It's a nice gun. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know which one I would pick over those two. I, without knowing the pricing on this on the Sig, it's hard to say. Jeremy, do you know that off the top of your head? Uh no, but I can look it up. Yeah, look that it's up. Like a billion dollars. Yeah, I will, I will say. Uh, if you're looking, if you're you got a couple nine mils on here, if you're looking at like the PTRs versus the Mat Nine, I think the PTRs are going to be a suppress a better suppressor host than they will. a direct blowback. Like yeah, roller delay blowback is going to be better. It's just going to be better. Um, that the Mat Nine is a great gun, but uh, I think the other one's a better suppressor host. Wait, what was that? Spear LT three hundred black. Correct. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm guessing three grand um well going off like the 556 and the 76239 are the same price i would assume the 300 blackouts right there Probably. retail map is 2600 mm -hmm. msrp is 2850 okay i wasn't uh, that far off. and what was the other one the descent yeah this descent in 300 blackout um keep talking because i'm looking it up you know what you know what i thought was kind of weird about the descent is it's still direct impingement. It's not like a piston gun. Like it's it's an enclosed recoil system, but it's not a piston gun upper. Oh, interesting. Like, and I, I just assumed when they came out with it, it was a piston gun. And I was like, oh, that's really interesting. But it's uh, not. Descent Mark IV, six and a half inch barrel, 300 blackout. Uh, you're probably going to be looking right around 1700-ish. Yeah. PTR 9C, I think, is about eight, 1800 you can pick them up for. Uh, Deal Bro has posted a couple of them recently. And the Mat 9 CCC, which is the entire thing, that's Glock Mags, by the way, uh, is going to be under $1,000. Uh, $9.99, and if you use our coupon code, WLS is life, it'll take it down 15%. Yeah, PTR 9. I just realized where my Nomad was. Hang on. Yo, yo. Uh, PTR 9, but... 1765 map. Uh, Are you going to get in trouble if I hold this up? No, we don't care. A and no, B. I mean, this yes. Is, this is the descent with the nomad on it. I realized oh. where it was. <laughs> nice. That way you get a, a like a, I, don't, I think this is the 10 and a half inch barrel. Looks like it. Yeah. So Very for good. those listening, he's showing the descent. Uh, 300 blackout. It's got a, is that a sig brace on there? I don't uh, it's, it's, it's SB no, tactical. Yeah, sorry. But yeah, very cool. And then um yeah, I mean there's so many there there's a lot of good options there. If you're trying to stay budget conscious, then I think that the Mat 9 is going to be your best bet or the Mat 9 CCC. Uh if you're trying to be a baller, Six Beer. Uh but in my opinion, like if you want to suppress it, PTR 9C is a fantastic option. Uh, Hawkeye Handloader said Matt 9 was about 850-ish. So. Uh, I'll tell you this. A PTR 9 with 165 grains with a Verse 9S on it is... Uh, I could probably kill somebody in the next room and you'd never hear it. Nice. It's it's like an aggressive stapler. <laughs> Do it. Do it, pussy. <laughs> <laughs> you like, won't. Yeah, I walk out on the range of that with that gun and that configuration with that ammo, and 
shoot and then people on the other side of the glass are like wait you're already done did you shoot and i go yeah and they're like we didn't fucking hear it <laughs> damn that's crazy i i have all of those i should try that there is a very important question we're missing here what's that crunchy cheetos or puffs uh crunchy. i crunchy for jeremy john i do both nick both is the answer yeah i want cheetos are mission specific yes thank I fuck agree. for that in, in in my mind they are not even the same family like sometimes i want puffs sometimes i want crunchy they're both fucking great it's never a i need to pick one or the other it's that i just want yeah. both. i figured you'd go for puffed because you look like the state puff marshmallow ah i was waiting for the fat joke <laughs> yeah, I, I knew it was coming i was ready for it i it thought hurt. you were gonna say you look swollen or something <laughs> it still hurts but i was ready for it okay so, so here's the here's the better question though cheetos puffs or the barrel of cheese balls oh cheese. no crunch crunchy no no, no. those are out well, all right so I, I got i got another story <laughs> so when i was like 16 years old uh i went to my buddy's house we were hanging out and his grandma grandpa brought like a big barrel of cheese balls right and they were like jalapeno cheese balls so I'm just sitting there. We're like hanging out. I'm just eating this shit like fucking. And I eat like a quarter of this fucking barrel. Right. And because uh, I get them all the way down before I realize like that I've eaten this many. Uh, then later that night after his parents go to bed, we sneak into the kitchen and we grab a gallon jug of gin uh, in a plastic jug. So, you know, it's quality. And I fill up a 16 ounce uh, uh, solo cup with gin. And well, know where this is going. And then we walk out in the woods. And th that's my drink for the night. So I end up drinking this entire fucking cup of gin. God. And I am fucking wrecked. And I'm trying to go to sleep or like camping out in the woods. And the moon, it's like a full moon outside. And I'm so fucking drunk. I just keep yelling at the moon, turn it off. <laughs> and uh so finally my buddy gets mad and he's like we're going up to the fucking house so we go up to the fucking house drunker and shit and we fucking crash in his uh up in his bedroom and i start getting the fucking spins mm. and then i proceed to start vomiting and i try to cover my mouth yeah i do one of these oh god oh. I, put, I put both hands over my mouth and he said basically all it did was create pressure yeah, and I basically projectile vomited uh, <laughs> jalapeno cheese balls and gin all over his fucking room. Yeah, he's like, dude, you got it on the ceiling. <laughs> That's and then like I end up and then I like finished puking in a fucking trash can after it was given to me, <laughs> and then I blacked the fuck out. Right, well, he's in panic mode because his whole room smells like <laughs> cheese balls and fucking gin. Yeah, hot damn! It's, it's like somebody. <laughs> fucking threw up jalapeno cheese balls on a christmas tree and uh so he's like cleaning his whole fucking room up flips his mattress over like because it's just a mattress on the floor and uh and uh yeah it was uh it was a night so nasty so nasty i i, I couldn't walk by a christmas i couldn't walk by a pine tree for about two years without dry heaving <laughs> <laughs> dude those are cheese balls man like i can't even honestly like have them around me because i have no self-control when it comes to that i'll eat the whole fucking <laughs> they're barrel. so good yeah it's like austin powers with the mole thing the mole. <laughs> yeah. Mole. <laughs> yes. and cheese balls. you know they're like 90 percent air yeah so you can just eat them forever and not get full they're so good which so makes good. them extra dangerous uh john would you take the next question please where are we at We're on bilp uh, bilp yeah I'll, I'll take bilp so bilp uh says looking to purchase my first 3d printer budget is around 4k for a full setup looking for suggestions on what printer slash filament is best for glock ish frame builds and for any recommended training slash youtube videos a new guy like me could take to better prepare for the printer simple stuff even a troglodyte like Aaron could understand. Finally, where is a good site to download some good files for printing? This guy's a fed. Yeah, I was just like, okay, fed. 4K right, is so a lot of money for, a, like, you, you get yourself a sweet setup for four grand. Dude, I was like, just buy a fucking, that, that'll buy you like two and a half of, 
So when I was researching, it was basically like the best one that you can get right now is the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon with AMS. Then I was talking to some guys in the cult the other day and they brought up the Prusa. So I started doing some research on like the, the Prusa Mark IV, I believe. And I was reading a bunch of stuff and it looked like people were still preferring the Bamboo Lab X1C. Uh, the Prusa Mark III, they say, is really, really good with a bunch of different add-ons and modifications and stuff like that. And the Mark IV is going to be like better. But if you just want to buy a printer and have it just work, the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon with AMS is like just fantastic. Uh, it's you can the, the iPhone of printers is the Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon. Yeah, and it's like fifteen hundred bucks with AMS. And the AMS is basically where it'll change colors. You can have up to, I think, 16 different colors and it'll automatically change them as you go. Correct. Uh, so that's that's what I'm experienced with. Like, I know people are still going to say like other stuff. And if you just look into just 3D print, if you don't want to fuck around with it every single time, like I Saturday before I left, I put a gun to print on mine and like Sunday morning, I got a notification that it was finished and I checked the camera and it was sure it finished successfully, got to work today, put it together. It was just like perfect. So if you just want to 3D print and you don't want the drama that goes along with it, I recommend that one. Now, having said that, the Ender 3 and the Ender 5 Pro that I've had, like they were good learning experiences because I had to basically learn how to troubleshoot every single thing that was involved in 3D printing because everything constantly went wrong. Even Nick today was talking about like, yeah, my printer is like skipping all the time. So now every time I think it's fixed, I got to fucking, it's not. So it's it gets frustrating. You could look very, at, very um, there's a channel called Maker's Muse that has some good tips on like troubleshooting um cnc kitchen has some good stuff i can't remember there's i think a guy's lost in tech i think that's another one there's a few like all you gotta do is just start digging into 3d printing guys and yeah. you'll start finding you know some some high quality content about you know troubleshooting this making your printer optimize and then even deeper than that i guarantee somebody has figured out all the optimal settings for each individual printer yeah. you know that that is available and and i think the thing that makes the the bamboo labs ultra appealing with the ams is it's a multi-material thing so the ams allows you to uh print off a bunch of different materials at once so if you were doing something that either required multiple colors or multiple different types of material you could run that and it just kind of handles it you know are you going to run into issues yes is 3D printing a rabbit hole you can absolutely get lost in? Yes. Like, I don't own a 3D printer, and I got lost in the rabbit hole already. I know. So, <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. Like, just be aware that, you know, you could get lost in it, and you kind of have to go, okay, how, how deep do I want to go, and what do I want to accomplish? Yeah. And for me, I just, I don't want to fuck around with shit. I just want to print. Yeah, like, I don't have time you. to do a bunch of bullshit. I just want to print. And that's why I, I am 100% sold on my choice, the X1 Carbon. It was it was exactly what I wanted it to be, and I can do the things that I need to do. It's fast as hell, and it's just great. Now, uh, God, what's the what's the dude we watched, John? The got the eye thing, the computer. Um, oh, uh, oh shit! Uh, he's from Colorado. What, Zach just, Friedman. I, yeah, Zach Friedman and what's his channel is something labs. Void uh, Star Labs. Void Star Labs. He's he is great. Uh lots Hilarious. of lots of really good valuable videos on like every single filament known to man. And I've watched those videos from start to finish a couple different times. Uh that's a that's a great one. And but just honestly, like get involved on X or Twitter. There's there's a good maker community there. There's a good maker community on Instagram, but they got constantly get taken down. That's why I recommend uh, X, like uh, the creator like Mr. Snow makes and yeah. um, Print Shoot Repeat. I don't know much beyond that in terms of like who creates content about it, but I know there's a whole community for it. Yeah, just go to controlpew.com, C-T-R-L-P-E-W.com. Oh yeah, duh. 
And then uh, the catalog is where I get most of my plans. Now, keep in mind that like some of this is ITAR regulated. And if you're not in the United States, if you're not legal, if you're a prohibited person, then you're going to break the law. We're not going to help you break the law. Those are places where you can get the stuff if you're legal to do so. And yeah, you should, you should do that. It's fun. Um, I think that answers all the questions. Uh, let's take a quick break. So we, we talked a little bit about Matador Arms, and I was talking to him today, actually. And uh, Matador Arms does make the Mat 9 Upper, which I have right over there, uh, which is awesome. Uh, I'm going to talk about it in the next show. Um, someone asked a question, or maybe it's actually in this show. I don't know. Uh, but Matador Arms also now makes their full rifles, their CCC um, combat, let's see, oh, sorry, CCC. close combat carbine. And let me switch to the view here. Yep, there we go. So here's their close combat carbines. Um, they take Glock mags right now, and you can see they just look absolutely wonderful. Uh, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of mine. The aftermarket's starting to pop up. There's, they, they support the 3d printing community as well. And, uh, sorry, cryptid Cretan in the chat said Hoffman and P80 Ralph also have some good channels. I agree with that. Cool. Um, yeah, they support the 3d print community. Like there's, I think there's plans for, um, like Mad nine lowers that are available out there and just all kinds of fun stuff. But I really love where Matador arms has has come from where they're going and if you would like to support them with either buying a lower the upper or the complete rifle go to matadorarms.com and use coupon code wls is life for 15 percent off and they may even give you a hug when they see you i don't know oh hey, yeah what what was your favorite song to play when you were in the uh rage against the machine tribute band <laughs> Are you asking me? Yeah. He was in the 311 tribute band. No, I was actually in a Rage Against the Machine cover band in high school. Oh, fuck. I did not know that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I talked about it before. Uh, pay attention. Killing in the name. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was kind of what... What instrument did you play? I was the lead singer. Oh. Did you do blackface? Not that time. <laughs> okay. No, I was, I was a lead singer in that band, and then I got into drums. I could still sing. I just... I became a drummer. You know, I'm glad to hear you say uh, Killing in the Name because that's the one, like, every time I hear that song, I imagine you singing now. Oh, like, you've basically you ruined Rage like Against that. the Machine for me. Sure. Sure. That'll um, happen. Not, not to say that you did a bad job. I'm sure you did an excellent job. Oh, I'm sure it was terrible. I don't even remember. Uh, you're just, you know, you're, I imagine it, but it's hard for me to imagine you doing it seriously. Oh, well, that's <laughs> interesting. You know, like I imagine. I, I don't think like you and I have ever had show. very like on the scale of our interactions. I would say that ninety nine percent of me and you talking is me or you just being a fucking douche and fucking around. Yeah, like I, I don't think we ever really have serious conversations. Back when I did the interviews, yes, and mm -hmm. like sprinkled in, but like the totality of our friendship has just been fucking around. So I get yeah. that, right. Yeah, uh, yeah, we we do this. We fuck around at shows. Yeah, that's about it. Play video games. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's the only serious time when we play. Like, contact left, contact left. <laughs> uh, Jeremy, we gotta do that again. Yeah, we do. I fucking suck at Call of Duty. Which so I bad. have gotten so much better. <laughs> Which brings me to my next point. Everybody needs to get VR because I need people to play. Uh, ghosts of to bore with oh that's so bad tell you what i'm not gonna do get vr i'm just not. well i'm sorry that you're wrong and you should play you should play red dead redemption with me and uh yeah that's <laughs> what we're doing right now yeah. so I'm, I'm playing I'll red dead redemption 2 with jeremy and then i'm playing uh hell divers 2 with my father-in-law <laughs> hell divers as good as they say i mean no, it's not as good as they say. It's fun. It's just really fucking repetitive over and oh, over. Same shit yeah, all the time. Yeah. However, when you're playing with your bros, it's fucking fun. That makes any game good. Yeah. So is Red Dead when Jeremy and I are playing that. And I'm pro I'm playing Red Dead more than anything else right now because I'm still trying to finish the story too. Anyway, unimportant. Uh, Jeremy, why don't you take the next question from Jeff? 
<laughs> oh, Jeff says, Jeff W, I've read conflicting articles about barrel breaking. What are your thoughts on barrel breaking for pistol length, semi automatic carbines, and pistols? Building a nine inch 556 and planning on an eight inch 300 blackout upper down the road, both will be suppressed. I wouldn't even bother that. Yeah. Unless you need to squeeze every bit of accuracy out of that fucking gun, I wouldn't even fucking bother. Do the inconsistencies in factory loads are worse than what you could do with barrel break in? Like, it's just such a fucking waste of time. Yeah. So let me ask you guys this. For the people that don't know, what is barrel break in? Like, what's barrel. actually happening or what are you doing? What are you doing? Uh, there barrel breaking is, oh, there's a lot of superstition to it. And there are people who will do all kinds of crazy, uh, stuff when they're breaking it. You know, they have all kinds of like cleaning procedures and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, there's also like, there's another side that says that barrel breaking is 100% bullshit. And I can't remember who wrote the article now. There's a there's an old article or like a editorial kind of piece written by um, it's like Lilja or something. I, I can't remember now. Mm. Um, anyway, he he basically says that barrel break in is bullshit and it's a uh, well, excuse me, it's a conspiracy to sell more barrels because they're hoping that you'll essentially like cause your barrel to wear faster by following in the barrel break-in procedure and then the part that that article gets cited a lot but the part that i think is really funny is that then at the after all of that he's like this is what i do and he basically gives a basic barrel break-in procedure <laughs> which is like shoot a couple rounds clean it shoot a couple rounds clean it and you're good to go um yeah so i It can make a difference. It cannot make a difference. Um, uh, Hawkeye Handloader says he only buys barrels that have been hand lapped. That definitely, uh, that definitely makes a difference. Um, yeah, I don't think it's like a, I don't think it's a thing that you really need to worry about unless you're getting super crazy. And if you're getting super crazy to the, you know, like bench rest level autism where you're like using magnets and shit to do crazy stuff with your 50 pound chassis <laughs> um then uh then you probably know enough about it to figure out how you feel let's it. also re rewind a minute this guy's talking about a nine inch five five six and yeah. an eight inch 300 blackout it doesn't yeah, fucking matter you're, right. you're good man so <laughs> so, send it. so what's actually happening when you do a barrel break in is when you cut metal with a cutter, whether it is a brooch or a single point cutter, or even if you're hammer forging it, you end up tearing the metal. It's not cutting, it's ripping through it. So you end up with like micro tears at the edge of your lands and grooves. And it's where the, bull, you know, where the bullet makes contact. And basically all you're doing when you shoot a bullet is you're taking those edges down. That's it. You're just, you're just lapping those those lands with a bullet instead of doing it by hand isn't micro terrorist what caused the aids epidemic uh no that was a gay dude fucking a monkey <laughs> how do you know that it was a gay dude because it was because he's been. like it was me it was, a, it, was a, it was a male monkey the monkey was my property <laughs> maybe it was a male monkey and a female human uh, didn't you watch that know. cartoon yes yes i did Except Trey Lock cavalcade of cartoon comedy. Trey Lock BDR says, "Built my wife a 16-inch Hanson AR blackout defense, four and a half pound trigger. I've had her on Scalar Works iron sights, but she's wanting to get into magnification. I had a six three X on an ADM mount, and she wasn't a fan of it. Would you recommend an Arrowhead one to six BDC, or what would have a better eye box? I feel she's only five foot two, so she's got those savage mm -hmm. arms." She's using this as a range and home shit hits the fan. Love the show. I've listened to every episode while out delivering mail. Unfortunately, my coworkers are commie fags and have no interest in our rights. Any input would really help. I'm not worried about price. I just want to get what would be the best for her. Hashtag SSB. Hashtag Gasline Hopper. I mean, you should still be able to collapse the stock all the way in and get her up on an optic. Yeah, yeah. And so I checked the arrowhead earlier, and it gave me several inches of eye relief. 
uh, at full magnification. So like, I think that it's a great option. That's actually the one that I have on pretty much everything that I consider to be my serious rifles just cause I've beat it to death and like it's still, it lived and was still effective and usable. So like that's a good option, but you know, any of the, if you want, I, I would say that probably the best I box I feel that I have is my vortex uh, PST or no vortex uh, razor HD. It's like a, well, back in the day, it was like a $2,000 LPVO. And it's awesome. Like it's beautiful and it's really, really pricey. So their head's going to be a lot more cost effective than that, but also beautiful and uh, feature packed. So I don't know. I think they're both good options. Anyone else have alternative views? Yeah. So you, you have to be aware that an eye box will change through the magnification range. Typically they shrink. So like when I'm setting up an optic on a gun, I will crank it to maximum um, magnification then I will get into the position that I will normally be s shooting in and for me on an AR-15 that's usually stock all the way out and the uh, rear of the optic right over the charging handle that's about where my head falls um, at least you know my eye falls in the eye box and I'll either lay prone or whatever and I try to find the right spot and that's where I adjust the optic you can move it forward rearward on the gun and I think it's very important if you are significantly taller than your wife, do not assume that you guys are going to be able to use that same setup. It's just not, it ain't going to work. Set up that gun specifically for her. Make sure that eye box is good um, and, and play with the different magnification ranges and be aware that it will change. And, you know, it, it's like I, when you say home shit hit the fan, like that is, that is such a broad term to me. Like, if you're talking about a home defense gun, I say rip that magnified optic off of there. Unless you live on a homestead and you have, like, a ton of property. You know? Oh, look. A little thumbs up. Thanks, Apple. <laughs> it's not doing it now. <laughs> Hold on. Wait. There. Did it? There it is. There it is. There it is. Yeah, I like, I, I, I get the LPVOs. I think for a lot of people, they, they become a little bit of a crutch and uh i say you know get good because i you can shoot inside of 200 yards with a red dot just effing fine at least with decent yeah. vision i should say that at least with decent vision true i love lpvos a lot of times i offset a red dot that's that a great setup too. that's actually a better setup than what i was talking about yeah that's that, a better that, way that, to handle it it's uh it's really effective because you can run like at a higher mag on the LPVO and then just use the red dot for anything inside a hundred. Then you could do like a two to 10, mm -hmm. something like that. Arrowhead comes in one in 10, one to 10. And I think a couple of different ones, but yeah, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff out there. Nick, please take the next question. Take it where? Uh, out to dinner and it'll definitely put out. Buy it a steak. <laughs> okay uh paul smenis says dear penthouse i am a nubile 20 year old co-ed co who needed a roommate to help for or to help pay for expenses i asked all of the applicants the following if you were rendered impotent and or sterile which of your co-hosts would you choose to carry on your bloodline? And why did you, or why did your spouse or significant other say Jeremy? No. <laughs> uh, sincerely, Paul Smenis. It's definitely Smenis. Mm, I disagree. <laughs> and Dor hashtag Dory Sashimi. I don't, I don't get that one. I don't, I don't either. Uh, um, that's some weeb shit. If my spouse or significant other said Jeremy, they would no longer be my spouse or significant other. I, I know Tyler well enough to know that she wouldn't say that. Uh, Angel would not say that either. In fact, when I asked her this question, she said, "Gross." <laughs> <laughs> that was her yeah. only response. Tyler would probably just kill herself. That's my <laughs> yep. that's my assumption. If she had well, to pick from the wheel, like now. shooting cast, <laughs> don't know what they're missing. <laughs> I think they do. <laughs> They met she you. just gave me a big thumbs up. <laughs> uh, fucking Jeremy's so mad right now. He's punching air. 
<laughs> I mean, I'm literally sitting here. <laughs> I can see I can see your small under the desk punches. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's masturbating. <laughs> <laughs> he's fucking jacking it over there. I'm a, I I literally read this question before the show and was like, God, who would I pick? And then I was like, no. Like it would obviously be Nick, but like you don't want to do that to a kid. Yeah, why would you want to give him a genetic uh, right. ability like right off the rip? Yeah, like oh, you know. I thought I was the kid in this situation. Like you wouldn't <laughs> want to force a baby on me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't want. Uh, yeah, like I mean, you're defective. Jeremy's defective. Aaron's disgusting. <laughs> what about Savage? <sighs> I think you all like of us kid to look like a thumb. I don't think he's heterosexual. I'm not sure either. <laughs> so, yeah. Sorry, Paul. I don't think that we're going to be able to help you on this one because it's just honestly. T- uh, Jeremy, who would you pick? Me. <laughs> no. <laughs> you're I would pick myself. You're I would let my bloodline die. <laughs> yeah, I think that's. Well, you're I'm letting your bloodline die anyways. I mean, not really. I have. Me. Dude, I have so many nieces and nephews. It's going to be have, fine. You have no children, so your bloodline is done. Eh. Well, yeah. the you are a unique mixture of your parents that your siblings are not, and you are effectively letting your bloodline die. In that case, everybody's bloodline is only one one person long. Right. <laughs> so like it's it not a lie. Well, no, it only go it only goes backwards. It, it hasn't gone forward yet until it has. What the shit are you even fucking? Yeah, what the about? fuck? <laughs> well, your bloodline going backwards can be traced. Your bloodline going forward cannot be until it has happened. And then it is going backwards. Not Thanks forward. for the history lesson. So I don't know. I don't know how hard that is to understand. So like okay. if you don't reproduce, your bloodline is removed from the planet. <laughs> Dr. Scary Guy said Jeremy's prepared for losing his man parts. That's not milk in his fridge. Thanks. I mean, it's, wouldn't, be the first time I, wouldn't be the first time I've artificially inseminated something. Cows. Moving on. Cows. <laughs> okay. Uh, I. <laughs> Jeremy just told us that he has molested cows. Well, we. I, already, I, I have. He been didn't shouldered. say cows. Well, it was cows. He said something. Yeah. They were his property. Yeah. The AIDS monkey. <laughs> <laughs> it was Jeremy's monkey. I said artificially. I am scared. Blue Alpha. Blue Alpha. Nick, what does Blue Alpha make? Uh, they make magazine carriers. I actually ordered a uh, pistol mag carrier today. Did you? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try it out. Just one. Just gotta make sure. Uh, one for now. Um, I'm messing around with the setup. I got a new chest rig today. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna throw that on there, and I have kind of a plan I wanna I wanna play with. So we'll see. There there will probably be others to follow. I just am trying to get it figured out first. John, how much blue alpha is like within your reach right now? Uh, none. Most of it's upstairs. Ah, yeah. Sorry. Uh, I I actually just picked up like earlier today their tourniquet holder. Yeah, I keep it in my med kit, and I wear. Uh, this is one of their like least talked about products, but I wear their beanies like almost every day when it's cold. They've got one that's like kind of you know less thick. I guess is the right word, but yeah. they're, they're fantastic. I love them. Yeah, I actually love their beanies too. And they actually they make their beanies in house. They're embroidered in house. They're sewn in house. Uh, they basically just take the fabric off the roll and and make them. And they they are pretty awesome. Tourniquet holder is awesome. The pistol pouches are awesome. Their belts are amazing. The their battle belt light is the best belt that uh, the best LARPing belt that I have by far and i've got probably 15 of them from different companies and it's, it's just the best by far blueoffabelts.com or blueoffa.us use coupon code wls69 to have sexual intercourse did you guys know that jeremy is actually the father of a uh, long line of race winning horses <laughs> i thought you were gonna say championship horses yeah, he, they're all, they all descended from Jeremy. What if, what if Jeremy was the source of the Glock semen? Somebody made that joke in the comments. Fuck. Uh, right here. Oh, Jeremy, we're for Glock. God, well, 
Fuck. Ha. Well, Fuck you, Sean. Well, I'm going to turn okay. the comments off. Dude, um, if I was getting paid that much money, I'd be jerking off in the cuffs left and right. <laughs> the funny thing is you already do for free. <laughs> right. Uh, I am going to leave those last two uh, for next for the next episode. We're running just a little bit long. So is it because Patton talks too much? Uh, no, no, it was the cheese puffs discussion. It was because Jeremy was like, you want to hear a story? And I was like, yeah. That's why. So, uh, Krista, uh, we're going to move those two to the next show. The winner this week is Bill P. So congratulations on that. If you'd like to submit yours, go to we like shooting.com slash dashboard and click on dear WLS. Now, before uh, we take off, we're going to talk about just some news uh, that I think is kind of interesting. Have you guys heard of the Delton D2, DT20? What the fuck? This is not a thing that I was aware of. John, what have you heard? So it's going out in the news tomorrow. That's the only reason I know about it. <laughs> so it's uh, it's a new micro compact, you know, 365 shield Hellcat competitor. They're bragging because it holds 12 rounds, whereas the I think the Hellcat holds 11 and everybody else holds 10 in a flush fit magazine. Mm -hmm. That's that's like their bragging point. They say it's a patented trigger. They don't explain what the fuck that means. Uh, I don't think it's optic cut. It's got a 499 MSRP. Kind of meh. I mean, I, I don't look at Delton as a premium company. So I think if that gun was no. priced at like 350 399 I would have been like okay that's reasonable but I think in what I think in the 60 second gun news I called it a I called Delton Rifles gun store dust collectors Yeah not one of those things that's like a whole bunch out there I didn't even know they were still in business I didn't same, either same. Yeah. And I saw the DT20 model name and I was like, holy shit, this thing holds 20 rounds. And then right, I scrolled down right. and I saw 12 and I was like, oh. I suspect it was a gun that was designed back in like COVID or something and they're just now releasing it. So here's what's interesting. They talk about the trigger and I, uh, I did a little bit of research trying to figure out like what specifically it was. So it's a double action striker fired trigger. The magazine is different because it doesn't... Um, it doesn't squeeze it to one round at the top. Both rounds actually sit at the top. And the reason that they do that, do that is because of the trigger. So there is no trigger bar that runs to the back of the firearm. Instead, it, the trigger bar basically reaches up into the slide, pushes a button, for lack of a better word, on the inside of the slide that acts as the sear. And that means that the slide on this gun is actually the serialized portion of the firearm, meaning you could be, you could swap out the frames and not like a fire control group. Uh, and this is interesting to me. Is that, I, I haven't seen anything like that. Have you guys? I've seen modular yeah. handguns out the ass. Yeah. 100%. But so again, like true double stack magazine all the way to the top to the feed lips and just like no transfer bar or no trigger bar. I think it's a I think it's a solution looking for a problem. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know what I mean? Like I and the other thing is it, you know, when the fire control group is the serialized portion, you can swap the slide, do all kinds of stuff to the slide, but if that's serialized, your options are limited in that way and lots of other guns have swappable frames. So like I get it, it's another option. I'm just not super pumped on it. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. My guess is that the 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 trigger pull sucks ass. I mean, yeah, that's what I'm really worried about. Is like that trigger is going to be trash. It's I a think flat that that, trigger though. Yeah, so yeah. Back up and listen, what if what if they came up with a fucking way and that trigger is just fucking amazing? I mean, then then I would be wrong, and that's okay. Because I mean, you realize that like every every striker fired pistol is basically just like a bullpup transfer bar. Yep. John's so. gonna John's gonna shoot this thing. And become the Howard Hughes of jizz. <laughs> what the fuck? Like he's so going to build a plane out of it? Yeah. Yeah. He's so confused. Keep jars in his closet. Of of jizz? What? Do you not know who Howard Hughes is? Not he's really. Just, he's trying to redirect. Because we Howard made all Hughes. the jokes about him and the cups and the horses. And Actually, I really wanted to make the Howard Hughes joke a long time ago. But then it got too long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that was a way to sneak it That was a swing there. and a miss. <laughs> Comment, just because you don't know Howard... Just because you don't know who Howard Hughes yeah. is, 
No, that's right. Comments I, weigh in on if that landed. Yeah, it it landed like the spruce goose did, which is to say it never <laughs> took off. I am curious about the Delton though. Like at first, I wasn't at all curious. with the way that they're doing the magazine and the way that they're doing the trigger. Yeah, and I would I would like to see how it works. Yeah, this is really fascinating, and I would I would love to get my hands on one. Yeah. I, I agree. Uh, unfortunately, I have no idea who the fuck reps Delton or like what's, what's that thing called? The DT20? DT20, yeah. I mean, they're one of those companies that have put zero effort into actual marketing. Yeah. You know, like their, their idea of marketing is a press release. 100%. So, to be fair, I there's a certain company I wish would take that fucking hint. Who? Who do you think? Who? The gun company that puts a full page ad in every fucking gun magazine, and I got to piss on their company name every year at Chat Show. Oh, <laughs> damn. Uh, I thought you were going to say SIG. They do the same shit. They don't go to Chat Show, though. Yeah. I'm yeah. Bad. But SIG makes more than AR 15s. Well, so does uh, so does Daniel Defense. Oh, they make, they the make one handgun <laughs> and <laughs> one handgun they just released. And uh, what, like a, did they ever make a bolt action? <laughs> hey, let me, <laughs> yeah, uh, anyway. they have hey, one. We, we make ARs and a lot of ARs. Hey, don't forget that we made ARs. Uh, I love it. All right. Hey, uh, next story. La the, this one's going to make Nick happy. I put it in the, I left it in the notes specifically for Nick. Lancer debuts the new L5 AWN Gen 2 magazines. And you might think to yourself, who fucking cares? And that's exactly what I thought at first until I read that it kind of solves some of Nick's concerns with these mags. So personally, I love the Lancer mags. I, I prefer them over Magpul. I think they're better looking. I have had zero problems with them whatsoever. But Nick said, if you drop one, uh, it'll eject a bunch of rounds out of it. And totally valid criticism. So this one actually takes uh, this um, updated feed lip geometry and a refined design compared to the original. Now, what that means is that there's DOD drop test standards and Lancer claims that their new L5 AWM lasts 122% longer than any competitor in those drop tests. So one broke at four and one broke at five. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, it's definitely not a lot, right? Like, so Nick, what do you think? Would you be willing to uh, swap if that one issue was fixed? Um. I mean, swap, probably not, just because I already have a bunch of magazines that are perfectly good and I'm not going to, like, throw them away. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, and and Lancers are more expensive. Um, but, yeah, if they seem to have fixed that issue, then, I yeah, I would love to have a couple, especially if they're doing all the fun colors and stuff, you know? Yeah. Those are a good time. They'll get there. Agreed. Yeah. Uh, we've been, I've been shooting these for a few months now. Oh, shit, nice. Um, so it's like kind of public. Not, I guess it's not. I don't know. Ben, the guy who helps me with videos, uh, I call him long range Ben. He works for them. Oh, okay. so we, we've, we've been playing with them for a while and they're, they're good mags. I mean, you know, as I, I, we don't, we don't do drop testing regularly. <laughs> so like, I don't, I can't weigh in on that part of it, but they work. Yeah. I usually drop them like in the dirt and they do fine in the dirt. I've never dropped them on like a hard floor, which is. I mean, that's a valid, valid test for a magazine for sure. I did drop, the, the ones that uh, I've had. You can go like this and rounds will pop out the top. Yikes. That's not great. Yeah. I think I have. A yeah, I mean, a little harder than that, but yeah, you can smack them with like the heel of your hand and they'll, they'll pop rounds out. I did a drop test on those quad stack mags from. <laughs> <Desert> <laughs> Tech. Um, let's just say, don't buy that. Just saying. I'll yeah, that's a discussion for another time, but don't buy it. <laughs> I love it. Florida Gun says, how do they do with 300 Black? So they actually sell the 30, the 10, and the 20 in both 5.56 or 300 Blackout models right now. Or I'm sorry, the 30 rounders are available now, 20 in June and 10 in September for the Gen 2 L5 AWM. And the, the difference in the magazines is internal, like structure. Like certain 5.56 mags won't feed 300 Blackout because of bullet shape and you know, like if it noses together at the, at the top of the mag, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah. by, if you're shooting blackout, get a blackout mag. I agreed. 100%. And I don't, 
I don't hate Lancer mags. Like I do have them still. I mostly use them for for so Hell yeah. yeah. Fucking big pimping over here. That's a two round mag right there. <laughs> it's a two round it's, mag. Uh, I think it's dollars. three. It's so ridiculous. Yeah. It's great for hunting though. It is. It. That's that's what I have it for. Uh, last story, CNH Precision debuts scope tube mounts for micro dots. I don't do do? <laughs> I don't want to say anything else. Is that a valid mounting mechanism? Does at first what I was do you like, mean? that's fucking stupid, right? Because like it's gonna it's re, like holding zero is gonna be a challenge for that. But then again, like probably not. CNH is pretty legit. Why yeah, would I don't, it be, I don't understand your I don't what you're saying about zero? So normally they're when you're mounting something to a tube, it requires more force to clamp it down and make sure that it's solid than, than it does if you're just mounting it to a hard mount somewhere and putting screws into a solid piece. Oh, so and you're saying there's more flex in the system. It seems to me like it would be tough to get it tight enough to not move without damaging tube of the scope and that's I mean, probably naive on my part this this concept has is not new you know what i mean people no. been doing tube mounted stuff for a while agreed normally it's like chinese companies on amazon uh i mean no there's some legit ones and and i mean your your scope is a tube that is mounted with rings and there's stuff like the aimpoint pro that is you know just a single 30 millimeter ring holding the red dot that's actually you know that's actually a really good point. The fucking yeah, rings that's... are holding onto a circle. Yeah, that's why I was, I was confused. I was like, it's. I I understand that like there is flex in the system, but the everything in a, on a gun flexes all of it. Yeah, all yeah. of it moves, and I think it's important that they just have the ability to go back to the normal, like go back to zero, so to speak. Yeah. So something like this with a diving board mount would be very interesting to me to solve some problems that I've recently worked on. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, I just thought it was interesting. 74.95 is how much those are going to cost when they when they release if they're not already available. Nope, they're available now. So yeah, 74.95 for the actual tube mount. So you could put a red dot on your scope just like we talked about earlier. All right. And I think that's going to do it for the news, but that's not going to do it. Oops. I already played that one. Because we got to talk about Bowers Group. So, John, you've got a lot of experience with Bowers Group. You can't see them, but there's a whole bunch back there. <laughs> there is. We all love Bowers Group. I was trying to think. The listener survey. One of the questions is, "What Bowers Group can should we uh, should we give away in the listener survey?" Oh, and. There's the answers are all over the place, and a lot of them are just like you pick. And I'm like, fuck, that's such an awful, tough choice. But I, I guess I know. what would you pick? The Asp nine, or the, sorry, the Asp forty five. Okay, that's and a reason, wet, wet can, right? I don't know, but the reason I like it is because it's ultra lightweight and it does a good job, and you can shoot forty five, ten mil, and nine through it, like. And there was a bunch of questions about nine mil carbines in the notes like tonight. So it True. sounds like your audience is tuned in with nine mil carbines, 45 ACP carbines, 10 mil carbines. Like that's the jam. PCCs are the jam right now. True. And, you know, having a good, small, lightweight can is not a bad idea. AR Drew said, why not let the winner pick? I guess that's a good idea. I mean, so yeah, I uh, I'm going to address something in the comments. Jay with said, uh, can it support 357 38? Yes. Basically, anything that uh, goes through the bore, assuming you know it's not a total piece of crap, can will be fine. 357. I would. I, I don't. They may. They may be like, oh yeah, get the stainless baffle version or some shit like that. But it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Well, the four, the 45 asp is a, a pistol can though, so like don't be running 45 70s through it. It's a pistol right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like it's a it's a PCC thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mine lives on my Henry Big Boy 45 Colt. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I've got mine on a uh, 
what the fuck? I think it's the 10 mil, like a 10 mil carbine or some shit. I don't know. <laughs> that's awesome. Bowersgroup.com coupon code WLS. And that's going to do it for this episode of Double Tap Gang. But you know what? We're going to we're going to do WLS as well. So Woo! Uh, go to WLSlive.com. You know what? You're already fucking watching. You're already listening. I don't need to tell you that. Join the National Association for Gun Rights. Get involved in your local community. Actually participate in your local government. Tell your friends about this podcast because maybe they don't know about it. Maybe they don't know how cool you are. Maybe they don't know what a cool podcast you listen to. I don't know. And don't forget to join our posse at welikeshooting.com slash cult. Suicide prevention line is 1-800-273-8255. Always prefer dangerous freedom over peaceful slavery. And we will see you next time. We love you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. I say goodbye. Bye. Aaron, where's the credits? Wrong thing. I'm looking for the credits. They're there. God, Aaron. Fucking idiot. Jesus, right. I'm leaving. <laughs> the title of this episode is Mouthfeel. <laughs> oh, and nice. guncon.net. Buy your tickets tomorrow, March 26th, 6 p.m. Eastern time. If you don't, Jeremy will make you his property. Like the AIDS monkey.